this this path works good it, use the largest ball that you can okay um, only because the way the toolpath wraps on there you may see some uh, excess areas right here so with a larger ball you won't see those with a real small ball you want a smaller step over so you make sure you get rid of these or get a smooth surface right across the center there okay so let's pause that okay let's stop that and then also a valley remachining again we're not selecting any geometry let's go into this operation you'll see and this actually um, between this and pencil tracing they're very similar uh, but I, I think the valley remachining actually does a better job so let's look at how this is done here well the pencil tracing uh, can be used as a pre-finishing or a roughing operation and then the valley remachining is really as we say it's a remachining or a finishing operation yeah. so good point okay so uh, we're not selecting anything we're going to let it calculate uh, the errors what now what it's doing is it's calculating the bi tangent location of the tool between the surfaces so we have a distinct almost right angle right here so it's going to calculate where the ball touches this surface where the ball touches this surface and then it's going to uh, add an offset to whatever we want so we got a tool here we got a 1 uh, ball mill and cut control we got uh really i don't know why i had such a tight tolerance there that must have been a typo And on this one, uh, you can use a tighter tolerance to get a smoother path. So I'm going to just loosen that up. Stock is zero, so it's a finishing path. Here we're telling it, you know, what was the diameter of your tool that you used prior to that? Even if you didn't use the exact diameter tool, this value is determining the width of the cut. Okay. So you want it to be at least the diameter of the previous tool. Okay. And one more point there, Don. I want to explain uh, that reference tool diameter is what uh, we use internally to compute the bitangency cuts. Mm -hmm. uh, that tool, we actually create a temporary tool using that, that tool diameter. We use a ball mill, and then we figure out the bitangencies mm -hmm. of where that tool is touching on both sides of the surfaces, mm -hmm. and then create a cutter path. And that cutter path, or path, if you will, and that path is then used to uh, create the valley remachining toolpath using the actual tool. Uh, in this case, it was a 1 16th that Don selected mm -hmm. uh, to create the actual machining uh, toolpath. Mm -hmm. Hope that makes sense. And again, uh, you can experiment with these uh, to see uh, all the different uh, parameters. For we have some additional cutting parameters, you can break. Uh, the tool pass up depending on uh, the angles uh, of the geometry or the, the bitangent and also uh, for determining you know whether the tool pass is going to be along the edge or across it we have it running along the edge and we have a step over of 25 percent of the tool okay and let's go ahead and simulate that slow that down just a little bit So it's beginning tangent to the sidewall surfaces, and it's working its way down, remaining tangent till it gets to the bottom surface here. And then the last pass on the bottom will be a bi-tangent pass, and then it's going to work its way out tangent to the bottom surface. So this is the ultimate finishing tool path. If you have a contoured surface, two contoured surfaces, uh, this is the type of control that you need. Uh, to do um, molds, uh, you can't get this kind of control uh, in the standard configuration. And then here is the, the uh, we mentioned the pencil trace uh, just goes around uh, in one pass. Okay, I do have one other part. I'm not sure how the timing is going because we started a little late, but I'm going to go ahead and take a moment to show you one other part. And let's open that. <clears throat> 
turn this. You have another on. 15 to 20 minutes on this, Don, so okay. you have plenty of time. So. Okay. So on this particular part here, we have a lot going on, um, obviously. So we have masking surfaces to mask these holes, you know, in the contour. And if, you, if you're familiar with the way uh, mold machining works, um, these areas up here will not be machined on a three or five axis. They'll actually be burnt in with a, a electrode, a, a, an EDM, electronic discharge machining. Electrode will actually burn these pockets right in there. So they're, it's very precise. And we also have a pocket down here that should be burned in. But what I wanted to show you uh, was the pencil trace as it uh, moved along uh, that bitangent area. Okay, and on this one, Let's see where they don't look like I show my, my actual control geometry. Let's go ahead and run that, turn that off. Slow that down. So what's remaining tangent to this wall and this bottom surface. I don't have a, 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 a bandwidth or cutting width set, so it's only doing one pass. And on the valley rim machining, it's the same. The pencil trace, uh, you cannot do a bandwidth. Uh, it's just a single pass, so that's oh, okay. all it does. Okay. Only on the valley rim machining, it uses the, the reference tool to figure out how wide it needs to go. Mm -hmm. So if we go back into the valley rim machining, you see that we have a five millimeter tool that we used previously, and then that will determine uh, the bandwidth of the uh, tool path. And let's see what pool we used there. We used a two millimeter ball mill. Let's go ahead and run that. To speed it up just a little bit. So it's just running around that like a racetrack. Very precise. That's what you want to use if you have a uh, any bitangent area. Uh, it doesn't have to be a mold. It can be anything. Um, okay. Okay. So that's basically all that I had to um, demonstrate. Uh, if you think we've got more time, we can go back into our other part and do some more on it if you want to. What do you think, Joe? I think you can bring up the uh, mouse part and then actually show the pencil trace and valley remachining. Starting with the pencil trace, I think it'll be okay. more instructive. And okay. you can actually generate the tool pads. Okay. we got about uh, 10 minutes left, okay. so. Okay. So let's go ahead. Uh, we got all that. We did all that, offset pocketing, and let's, sorry about the pop-up. Um, with the valley remachining, again, um, go into let's the- Let's do the pencil trace first, Don. I think that's, uh, we are normally, typically on a mold, we yeah. start with the pencil trace, so we do the roughing followed by the valley remachining, so. Okay, let's make this a little bit easier to see. Okay, so make it a little bit bolder. And let's go and look at the pencil trace parameters. Okay. Um, I had these these boundaries selected. You don't really need to select those. I'm not sure why I had them selected. So for a tool, I'm using a 1 16th five degree taper mill, as I mentioned previously. For the cup parameters, uh, a thousandths tolerance. Uh, everything here is fine, the default parameters. Advanced parameters. Let's go look at let's go look at the cut parameters. Okay. So yeah, you're right. You, can, uh, you yeah. could do multiple cuts. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry about that. You could uh, check that and then do if you want to uh, determine a bandwidth, it'll uh, it'll do a bandwidth of cuts. So let's just leave that off for now. So cut parameters advanced. Uh, everything looks good. Let's generate that. Now you'll see that it does take a moment longer than a normal, like a between two curves or a parallel finishing is probably the fastest operation that we have. 
into yeah, a lot of computations yeah. there because it's computing the by tangencies. So, mm -hmm. and also while this is actually it calculated it, so it got one by tangent path around it. And let's go ahead and simulate that again. We can just simulate all of them. And if you want to go down, we can just go down to here, right click and say simulate until. So we're just going to go through all of the simulations. <clears throat> Hopefully I didn't tax it too much. Okay, there we go. So we simulated it all. Now let's look at the pencil trace. Slow this down. And uh, what I want to do is I want to do a preview port. And I'm going to play that. So you can see down here. Let's pause that. Looks like it's playing. Let's pause it. What? Oh, what? Okay. I wanted him to see this right here. Okay, so let's play that. Speed that up just a little bit. So it's working its way down. And you'll see that it's automatically putting the five degree taper. And the 1 16th ball is tangent to these two surfaces here and here. Looks like it went all the way through. Let's run that again. <clears throat> and again, you can keep, depending on how sharp a radius is required or what you can get away with here, uh, you can keep using a smaller uh, ball on the taper mill. Uh, just to get that as tight as you need to get it, okay? And then one the other note on uh, compute speed, Don, was uh, taper tools uh, notoriously are take a lot more calculations, so yep. taper tools will run slower mm -hmm. uh, than the standard uh, straight ball melts. Mm -hmm. um, what what we're demonstrating here is the power of the professional configuration, okay? With combination with both ball mills and taper mills to have as much control as you need with that tool on your geometry. If you have a complex geometry like this, you really should be running with the professional configuration so that you have these, these tool path types that you can use and you can use them uh, with any uh, tool type that you need. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and run that. Let's talk about that value remachining also, or maybe even recompute it with the ball mill, a straight ball. Okay, we can do that. Okay, we'll just leave it in a four view port. And let's go ahead and look at the value remachine again. So we didn't select any geometry. It will automatically calculate and analyze uh, all of your geometry to determine your bitangent locations. And on this part, it's only going to find a bitangent in this area. So let's go to the tool. We got a, a 1 16th uh, straight ball mill. And um, <clears throat> again, I didn't use a taper, so it's going to remove that five degree taper if I run it with the ball mill. So let's go ahead and do that and see what it looks like. Okay, cut control. Not sure why that was so tight. Let's go ahead and make this 1,000, 1,000.2. 1, uh, I guess that'd be all right, 0.2. All of those, we're doing a long curve or along the bitangent. You could do across, it'll just work its way across all the way around it. Um, that wouldn't be a good for this particular part though. 
So we're gonna do a long, and let's just generate that. That was fast, Joe. That was faster than I thought it would be. Okay, so we calculated that almost instantly, Joe. And if you do that with a taper mill. I think uh, the ball mills, uh, straight ball mills are, as I mentioned, performance is much faster than mm -hmm. the taper mills. So. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to, we can go ahead and change the tool. If you want to see the difference. We have a taper mill, 1 16th, 5 degree. That was task two. It looks like it didn't go all the way around, though, did it? Not sure why. Let's go in here and see if we need to tighten that. Maybe that's why I had it tighter. Okay. Well, Joe, it looks like we still got a full crowd with us. So, again, uh, we apologize for the technical difficulties. Okay, so it's still not going all the way around. I'm not really sure why. Um, on the other part that I have on my uh, other screen, it's fine. So, uh, when we send you the parts, if you ask for these files, uh, it will be generated correctly. I'm not quite sure why it's not doing it. Okay. Well, um, we got any questions, Joe? That's about all I have to present.